So today's video is about how I, as a saxophone player, approach using effects pedals in the context of an acoustic live setting. So what does all that mean? Well, first of all, saxophone is kind of a difficult instrument to use with effects pedals because it needs a microphone. Um, and this, the sound of the saxophone isn't like a trumpet per se, where it just comes out of one area. It comes out all over the horn, so it's difficult to capture. Okay. But also, what does acoustic live mean? Well, I come from jazz, and most of the music that I play is in a live setting. So it's not like we're in the studio individually tracking layers where things can be really, really isolated. It's in a big acoustic setting where everything is all mixed in the air together with acoustic instruments. And um, it's live, right? So just like I was saying, we're not tracking things individually. That has a really, really big effect on what I need to bring if I'm gonna bring effects at all into that kind of space, all right? There's gonna be some effects that will just not do anything. And then I think if you're a saxophone player who is in a similar kind of context, you need to choose the effects very, very carefully because a lot of them are not gonna work. We'll talk more in depth about why I chose these specific effects, but things that aren't really going to work very well, unfortunately for a lot of us, um, is like fuzz, distortion, overdrive, like any kind of dirt pedals, not really going to work um, in a typical acoustic live space. Again, this is acoustic live. And why is that? Well, like I said, in an acoustic live space, everyone's going to hear your acoustic tone way over anything that's coming out of the amp behind you. Even if you have like two stereo amps, whatever it is, this is still gonna be the dominant sound and that is very important. Okay, this being the dominant sound, you have to choose effects that complement that, not really change them. So distortion, you're not really going to hear it coming out of the amp over your acoustic tone. A lot of dry modulation effects like phasing, um, you might hear some flanging, but tremolo, that stuff, unfortunately, it's just going to get overpowered by your acoustic tone and it kind of be a waste of money to invest in something like that. if You can't really make it part of the acoustic live space. Okay, um, so the kinds of effects I have here complement that sound. They're things that go along with the acoustic sound and not so much try and change it. All right, so we're gonna talk about this with a better close-up view of the pedal so you can all see. And I have some actual examples um, from a, a, a live album I did. We went in the studio, but we all tracked it live. And I have very nice musical context for how I use this exact pedal board um, for specific parts of the music, okay? So I really hope you enjoy this one. Maybe if you're a guitar player or anyone who's not dealing with an acoustic sound so much, uh, might not be the video for you, but hey, it might. It might give you a different idea or a different way to approach the way you use effects. Either way, I'd be really happy if you all stick around and let's jump straight into the actual content. Okay, so in the introduction, I was talking about some effects that really don't work well with saxophone in an acoustic live context, which is like dirt pedals or dry modulation. So what effects are kind of nice to complement your acoustic live sound in the context of an acoustic live band? So my pedal board here is a collection of effects that I personally really like to use in that acoustic live context, okay? Uh, so let's run you through the chain right now. I'm gonna have this microphone here to record not only my voice, but it's also gonna record my acoustic sound, which will be separate from the effects sound. So I have like dry sound and an effect sound. For the effects, I have SM57 running into old blood, uh, old blood noise endeavors signal blender, which is a parallel mixer. And I do use it for parallel mixing by plugging in different instruments or routing effects in parallel. But for right now, I'm just very simply using it as a preamp to help the 57 get a little bit more uh, before entering the effects. So that's what that is. The next up in the chain is the Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine, which is a pitch shifter um, and delay. And I use it mostly for a rising kind of pitch effect, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, I have the Red Panda Lab Tensor, and then it goes into the hologram electronics microcosm, and then finally into Maris Polymoon, which goes out into the audio interface or amp, depending on whatever the situation is. 
This pedal here is an expression set pedal I hooked up to the tensor, which we'll explain more in detail when we get there. So first effect in the loop is the Rainbow Machine by Earthquaker devices. And it can do a lot of different cool pitch shifting effects, some uh, interesting things with minor thirds and harmonizing with fourths above and below. You should check out my uh, How I Use the Rainbow Machine video for more in depth. But again, right now we're focusing on more of the acoustic live setting. And I kind of only use it for one effect, which I cannot take credit for. Um, I got this from watching Stefan's The Pedal Zone. Uh, his great YouTube channel has inspired a lot of all this stuff. Um, but what he does in a video of his is he shows how to use the rainbow machine as a kind of ascending and descending, uh, as he describes it, a Loch Ness monster kind of peekaboo effect. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, I set the pitch to be just barely, barely to the clockwise of noon. So the pitch is barely going to be higher than my input. So. Here's what it sounds like all together. It would help if I had the, the, uh, this turned on. Okay, so a nice little um, pitch up effect, right? And again, you can already tell how that'll be useful. If I'm playing a more eerie we can say an eerie thing where i'm just uh holding out some notes just some long tones or something this will be a nice way to get with the playing again not changing my sound but complementing it. it's like an eerie kind of trail or ghost behind what i'm doing so again like to use it going down as well too so again just very slightly so it has that downward effect okay so beautiful beautiful effect and another way i like to use this is pairing it with a fully wet reverb so it really gets you a nice cavernous kind of trail so I'm gonna skip around for a second because the microcosm has a beautiful built-in reverb, which is exactly what I use in combination with this for. So here's that with um, some reverb from this guy. So that's the way that I really like to use the Rainbow Machine. And now I'll show you a clip in context of other music or other instruments from my album. This is on the song Selkirk. Here's an instance where I'm using this and this together, just like you heard in the context of other instruments. effect in the chain is the red panda tensor which is a lot of things it's like a has an 11 second looper it has um uh like overdubbing capabilities it has a tape stop kind of effect um a lot of different stuff but the thing i use it for most is just simply as a pitch shifter and you might be like well a pitch shifter i can definitely get a cheaper one that can do the similar things and you're absolutely right you could um, this is the one I personally like to use because with expression, it kind of changes the nature of it. 
So if I just, let me just freeze a note inside of it so we can show you what I'm doing. So then my note is just frozen in it. So now if I use the pitch, changes with those steps, right? It's kind of like a minor pentatonic scale with the two in there as well, too. But what expression is really nice for it is that it will actually glide it up rather than taking the steps. So it becomes uh, like a glissando effect, so. So I really like it uh, set to a fifth. You can set it to the octave if you like. But I think the fifth uh, is a little more musical for the stuff that I play. Okay, so that's what I really like to use it for. I like to use it in combination with the polymoon, which gets you a nice wash. But um, if so here's an example where I use this fifth gliding fifth up um, effect in the context of acoustic live music. heard that the next thing in the loop is the hologram electronics microcosm which is a very not a comp it's complicated pedal but it just has a lot in it a lot a lot a lot of stuff remember this is in the context of acoustic live music and you're not going to have as much time when you're doing a lot of improvisation again more from the background and the music that i play to play with all the knobs so Funny enough, I actually don't use any of the like regular effects, like none of the granules, the micro loops, the glitch, or anything at all. I program it using the pre-effects and looper only mode. So it's just a looper, but it has some reverb and filtering capabilities, which I really, really like because they're simple. Um, and it's just, it, it just works, right? So it's just, instead of being a super complicated machine, it's now just a looper that has some reverb and some filtering. So here's an instance where I'm going to put some tensor and some rainbow machine stuff like I just did in the previous examples into a loop. And then we'll show you the live, the acoustic live context. So here's what it would be like. Delete that. Okay. So just start the loop. stuff and like I said we can add reverb to that now and filtering to just change it drastically with just a little <laughs> some uh, resonance on your filter as well too so you can make it really sci-fi so here's an example of that <laughs> pretty cool.
cool stuff there, okay? So there's an, a way where I use what seems to be a complicated pedal very simply and very applicable to an acoustic live set. So here is the um, example from one of my songs from this record where I use these exact techniques thrown into the looper in the context of other instruments. Last up in the chain is the Polymoon by Maris, which is my favorite pedal of all time, my desert island pedal, whatever you want to call it. I'll never leave my board. If I could only choose one, this is it. And first question is, why would you run a, de -looper, a delay after the looper? It makes sense that you want to put your delays in. And you can do that. That's totally fine. But Polymoon, um, as much as a delay pedal, it's just the perfect end of chain pedal for so many reasons. Um, and I use it for a lot of things. For example, if I don't want the reverb in my looper, I can put it into this and you'll hear how different of a um, difference it will make when I add some delays after the loop. So, So again, um, I use it mostly as a wash for my acoustic live stuff. Um, so for example, when I'm playing in something very diatonic or just need a little bit of something underneath my playing, just flick it on in this kind of setting that I have. Again, you can see how that's just a nice wash that's behind your playing and complements that acoustic sound. It's a trail, a kind of ghost that follows your playing around. It's not something up front or trying to take over your tone, right? Um, and of course, I like to pair it with a lot of different effects like the tensor and, and, and everything. Everything will pair nicely with it because it's just giving you that little bit of extra trail. So here's an example where it's just me playing from a song on my record with just this, just as a little nice um, ambient trail. That's the whole entire pedal board there. I hope you guys were able to learn something. I hope you enjoyed the video, if nothing else. Again, it's um, a relatively simple board. It's not a whole ton of pedals because with acoustic live music, the emphasis shouldn't necessarily be on effects as much as the, the air and the music around you and interaction with other instruments. I think for that kind of purpose, this board is assembled in the idea that it's just complementing what's going on and adding an extra texture um, after the fact, not trying to change the entire dynamic of the entire music, right? So again, just the emphasis on the acoustic live music. If you're on a big stage where you have monitors and everybody's got headphones in, different. You can probably dive into that distortion stuff for sure, right? Um, but but yeah, it's a, 
it, it's just what I really like to do with effects. It, it's creative, but it, and nice, a nice little enhancement from your typical kind of setting. So again, not to ramble, hope you enjoyed. I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.